Hello and welcome to Vegan Cafe 21. In our series of gluten-free flatbreads and breads, today we are making sorghum flatbread or jowar roti. It's a really easy flatbread to make if you follow the techniques. So let's get to it. I'm using one cup of sorghum flour. To prepare our dough, we are going to boil one cup of water. Here I have half a teaspoon of pink salt. You can adjust salt to your taste and liking. In this bowl, I have some sorghum flour, about a quarter cup or so, for dusting the work surface. We will use about a teaspoon of olive oil to prepare our dough. And here on standby, I have half a cup of room temperature water. Over on the stove top, I have a pot. I have turned the heat on under it and to it, I'm going to add our cup of water. Let's bring this water to boil. Our water has started boiling, so let's bring in our salt and a teaspoon of olive oil. Give it a stir. To this boiling water, I'm going to add flour. In goes the sorghum flour. Mix it in. And now I'm going to turn the heat off. Incorporate it as best as you can using a spatula or a spoon. That's it. Now we're going to put a lid on it and let it sit for about five to seven minutes. After about seven minutes. Now, as you can see, it has tightened up quite a bit, not as soft. So now we are going to take this water that we had on standby and add just a little at a time and start preparing our dough. You can wait till it's cool enough for you to touch or just use the spatula till it gets cool enough to touch. Be mindful to not add too much water at once, otherwise the dough will not be manageable. You can feel the dough. I think it's cool enough for me to touch. Just keep feeling the dough and adding the water. We are looking for a soft, pliable dough. And the most important motion is you want to use this part of your palm to push it away and fold it over itself. You need to do this just a few times. It's not sticky, but it's soft. Now we can transfer it to our work surface and continue pushing and folding. This motion is important to avoid cracks while you roll. If it feels like it's getting tighter, you can add just a little water. I think we are looking good. The dough is soft and soft. Smooth. So we're going to set it over here right next to our flour and get ready to prepare our flatbread. On the stove top, I'm heating a cast iron pan which we are going to use to cook our flatbreads on. Now while our pan heats up, let's start rolling our flatbreads. And once again, we are going to fold it over itself a few times. Just roll it up, fold it over itself. You can do it on your work surface. or you can do it in your hand. This ensures there are no cracks as you roll your flatbread. Nice, smooth ball of dough. Now we are going to roll it in some flour from all sides. And using your fingers, the tips of your fingers and your thumb, you're just going to press it gently and start spreading it out. I'm using all four fingers and my thumb, both hands, applying gentle pressure and just increasing the size of this ball. Place it down. If you don't feel comfortable using your fingers and thumbs to do this, you can just lay the ball on the flat surface and keep spreading it like this. Keep turning it and spreading it. 
And now using your rolling pin, you start spreading it. Very gentle pressure. This is a very soft dough. You don't want to apply too much pressure. If shape is important to you, try to stick as close to creating a circle as you can. But believe me, regardless of any shape, the taste will still be good. Our skillet is nice and hot. You don't want it to be smoking hot. I've been heating it between medium and high and that's where I'm gonna keep my heat. Now while that is cooking, let's create more dough portions out of our dough here. You'll be able to make about seven to eight flatbreads or tortillas out of one cup of sorghum flour. Let's check our flatbread on the skillet. Once the top appears dry, it's time for you to flip it. Let's check again, see how our bread is doing. It looks ready for us to cook on the flame. Now there are two ways to cook this. You can cook this directly on the open flame or you can press with the spatula and cook it on the skillet itself. I'm gonna show you both ways. This I'm gonna do on the flame. See, it pops up nicely. You want nice, beautiful, golden, tiny spots all around. And done. Move the skillet back onto the heat and wait for it to get hot before placing the next tortilla. Make sure you maintain the temperature of your skillet at all times. It should not get too cold or smoking hot. Now be patient when using a spatula. You don't want to start pressing it too soon. It'll indicate that it's ready to be pressed by popping up lightly around the edges. Very gently, you're going to just press it around. We're gonna let it get some nice golden spots on both sides before we remove it from our skillet. If your skillet is too cold while you have the tortilla on it, chances are your tortilla will come out stiff and hard, not as soft. These are best served with a coating of good quality olive oil or any uh, fat of your choice. A vegan butter would be great as well. Just a generous coating on each one of them. And here I have some okra that I'm going to use to create a sort of taco or a wrap if you will. Just stuff it with any filling of your choice or alongside a curry would be great as well. Let me show you how soft they are. They won't break, they won't fall apart. There you have it, gluten-free, vegan, sorghum flatbread or tortillas. Now a few quick tips. When you're ready to prepare the dough, make sure your water is boiling before you add the flour to it. Secondly, remember to use push and fold technique to avoid any cracks during the rolling process. And lastly, roll them with even thickness all around. You can keep them a little thicker or thinner, doesn't matter as long as it doesn't rip before you transfer it to your skillet. Maintain the temperature of your skillet during the entire time. Too hot or too cold will compromise the texture of your cooked tortillas. You can store any leftovers wrapped tightly in saran wrap, reheat them when you're ready to use them, but use them within two to three days. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Please do give it a try and don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you again soon with more vegan favorites.